Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are celebrating. It is the 4th of July. I hope you're having a great holiday with your family and friends, doing all the things that you like to do. Here at Bucket Ponds, we like to do jar aquarium type stuff. So we have one of our oldest jars here. You guys got a brief glimpse of it in my most recent video uh, in the background. It looks crazy, but I assure you that this is a excellent ecosystem inside. And all of this plant growth is essentially powered by snail poo. Yeah, it sounds crazy, but uh, snail droppings are actually very fertile, uh, possibly more so than worm castings. So you can use your bladder snails to grow a lot of plants. And uh, our bladder snails are also backed up by other members of our uh, pet collection. We have detritus worms of one type or another. You can see them descending from above there. It's very interesting. Uh, we also have quite a few bladder snails in here, really, more than I expected. This is a very healthy population. I feed these jars about once a week with a piece of cucumber or cantaloupe. Uh, but also inside, we have diving beetles. Yes, predatory diving beetles. And this is a very special event. Uh, they move very quickly. They like to expose their backside to the air. They capture a small bubble, and they take that with them underwater and use that to breathe. They swim very quickly. They are so energetic and entertaining. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see them in here. I would like to add them to our creature collection, you know, permanently, officially. Uh, but as it is, we have uh, accidentally built a tank that they enjoy. So we must have some prey items in here. I'm not sure. We're going to try to replicate the success of this tank uh, elsewhere. For now, though, I've cut off all the day flower and I've tucked in the remaining stems. And we're going to take this opportunity to clean it up a little bit, wipe down the rim and the outside of the jar. Now, I call this harvesting. I've harvested all the day flower from this tank. I've left the roots inside and taken all the stems to feed uh, some other invertebrates elsewhere. Uh, it looks crazy. It sounds crazy. But we have harvested from this jar about three times. And uh, that's once every few months. So this is an excellent little farm producing day flower. Uh, now the tank still looks a little cloudy. And I could try to do a water change. But I don't want to mess with the chemistry in here. Something is working very well. And we have a ton of life. Uh, lots of plant growth. Everything looks great. So I'm not going to do a water change. I don't want to uh, lose whatever's working in this project. I imagine if we were to test this water, it would probably be fairly neutral to slightly acidic, and it would most likely be uh, pretty much free of ammonia and nitrates and nitrites. I'm just guessing here, though. I don't feel like running a whole, like, chemistry test on this tank. We don't need to. Uh, but we will add some fresh water. Yeah, so I'm not going to remove the water. I'm just going to do a top-up, which will stir things up quite a bit. A lot of dirt and mulm will get uh, tossed around, but that's fine. Our snails don't mind so much, and this might actually be good for this ecosystem uh, as we stir up all these nutrients. And I should mention that cutting our dayflower like that will not hurt it. It will grow back even stronger. There will be even more of it here in just a month or two. I uh, have added a, a slice of, uh, <laughs> a slice, a piece of a small leaf spiderwort up here, which will help to uh, grow with our dayflower and add a little bit of biodiversity, which I think is good. And this is three days after we did the top up on the tank. Everything has settled down a bit. Those stems that we stuck down in there, the snails are going to eat them eventually. And that's fine. Uh, dayflower is a very hardy plant. Uh, climbing dayflower, I should say. It's very hardy, very durable. It loves to grow in jar aquariums. And when you cut it down like this, you just trigger a massive uh, surge of regrowth. So don't worry. It looks a little crazy. But the snails are going to clean up everything they can in here. Every wil wilted leaf and uh, anything that they can chew on, really. <laughs> and that's good. They won't actually eat live plants, though. That's very important. I've never seen a bladder snail eat a living plant. Uh, but also, uh, looking closer at our detritus worms in here, um, I should mention that that term fits a wide number of different species, different types of worms. And, you know, it can be very confusing. It can also make it very difficult to actually identify a uh, proper, you know, worm species. If you Google online, everybody's like, oh, it's a detritus worm. Don't worry about it. Uh, but <laughs> or kill them, you know, get them out of your tank. It's horrible. Ew. Yeah. But we don't do that here. We love our worms. And in fact, these little guys are darrow worms. 
and uh, this was uh, taught to us by a uh, scientific-minded friend of ours. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm just very happy with uh, this project. It's nice to see these worms in here. I believe this is the first tank that we uh, found them in, quotation marks. Uh, <laughs> this seems to happen a lot, as I'll have new species appearing in one way or another in my various aquariums. Uh, but you can see that these worms are a bit different. They have an interesting uh, fan, or like a, an extended gill. And it's, uh, it's really interesting. It's just an appendage on their body. It kind of looks like three little mouths, you know. Uh, but I believe that that helps them breathe. And uh, they're just really cool. They do kind of cluster and form groups a bit like our wild-type tube effects, but I don't think that they are the same species. Uh, I'll have to try to get them breeding or, you know, together sometime. But I'm really happy with this project, you guys. I love that we have diving beetles in here. I'm hoping that we can use them to eat our drain fly larvae that we have occasionally dealt with as a big problem. And I'm really interested to see the worms in here doing so well and the bladder snails. So this tank will live on. It will continue to exist on our shelf, which I have cleaned up quite a bit. <laughs> uh, I have taken a few trios of diving beetles, two trios to be exact, and I've applied them to some other tanks to see if we cannot get their population to be established and get them to breed for us. Oh, that'll be so magical. Um, they are predators. They eat little insects and little little aquatic animals, you know, <laughs> like our microfauna. So it's really cool. I hope that they uh, stick with us and we can officially add them to the creature collection. I babbled a lot, but uh, too long didn't read. Uh, we're adding different species to our Pokemon team to, uh, you know, create better jar aquariums. Yeah, that's the best way to say it. Anyway, guys, I hope you're having a great 4th of July. Big thank you to all of our YouTube members and our Patreon supporters. You guys know who you are. Uh, I am so eternally grateful uh, to have somebody standing behind the projects, behind Bucket Pollens, and keeping me grounded and stuff. It's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, for everybody else, uh, check out some of the videos that I have on my channel. You'll probably like them. Uh, lately, I've been on Facebook <laughs> making fun of fake gardening pages. Uh, you know, they'll take a picture off the internet and pretend that they grew this plant or whatever, and I, I just don't like that. It bothers me, so I make fun of them a little bit. Uh, but I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.